Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Dune is director Denny Villeneuve's take on Frank Herbert's sci-fi masterpiece that George Lucas must have read and be like, oh, people will like this a lot more if I just call it Star Wars, and then a generation from now everyone will hate it, and then a generation after that everyone will like it again, but then really hate it. David Lynch also gave it a shot in 84, but now, hopefully in December 2020, Timothy Chalamet will pout so hard at some sandy booty holes. I don't like sand. It's coarse rough and irritating and it gets everywhere girl that's a booty hole after i properly reacted to this trailer when it came out i am now going to break it down shot by shot for all the hidden visual details that you might have missed and explanations of what we are looking at spoiler warning because i will talk about the dune story from the novel but i am going to try to avoid predicting step by step the plot of this movie version of it let's get started there's something happening to me there's something awakening in my mind i can't control it what did you see? There's a crusade coming. Okay, let's start with a quick overview as possible as that is with Dune. Dune is set about 20,000 years in the future in which mankind has spread out to thousands of planets all governed by the feudal imperium overseeing noble ruling families. Timothy Chalamet plays Paul Atreides, son of Duke Leto Atreides, who begins this story ruling the planet Caliban but is assigned to take over Arrakis, aka Dune, a desert planet home to these giant sandworms and the only place in the known universe that produces a critical resource called melange, aka spice, the term that George Lucas also lifted as a word for drugs in the Star Wars universe. But yeah, in Dune, spice is the drug that people get insanely addicted to. It enhances their abilities and elongates their lifespans. Most importantly, it is fed to guild navigators, humanoid mutants who use the spice to perform complex mental computations in order to fold space and make interplanetary travel and commerce possible. You could look at spice as kind of the fossil fuel or the gold that makes makes this galaxy go round. That's why Arrakis is so important. Now, when you use Melange, it causes your eyes to glow blue, as Paul sees in his vision of Chani, played by Zendaya. Chani is a Fremen, a desert tribe on Arrakis. His visions of her are the result of selective breeding by his mother, Lady Jessica, part of a group of witches called the Bene Gesserit, who plan to produce a mentally enhanced female heir from House Atreides to marry the male heir from the rival house, Harkonnen, with those two's child being a chosen one messiah to end the conflict and lead mankind on the golden path. Now, House Harkonnen are the previous rulers of Arrakis who are technically involved in a secret plot with the Emperor to kill off House Atreides on Arrakis because House Atreides is getting a little too popular for the Emperor's taste. That is the death trap referred to later in this trailer and the crusade referred to in this clip. Now, book readers might grumble at the word crusade because in Herbert's book, the term used is jihad, as many of Herbert's terms and names are inspired by the Arabic language and culture. To be fair, Herbert did also sometimes use the word crusade in his book. Either way, it's a holy war, but in name only, because these warring parties are really more motivated by power than they are by religious differences. On to the next part of the trailer. Do you often dream things that happen just as you dream them? Yes. The test is simple. Remove your hand from the box, and you die. What's in the box? Pain. Here we see Paul's test with the Bene Gesserit Reverend Mother. This is the test of humanity used by the Bene Gesserit to make sure the subject's awareness is stronger than their instincts. The needle she holds to his neck is the poisoned Gam Jabbar. The test subject's awareness of the needle must override their instincts to pull their hand out of the box, a box that delivers a tremendous amount of pain because major character severed head is inside that box painting your fingers. What's in the fucking box? I'm kidding, do not joke about what's in the box being a seven reference because quite a few humorless dune heads in your reaction video comments will not get the joke. Moving on. You inherit too much power. You have proven you can rule yourself. Now you must learn to rule others. Something none of your ancestors learned. Paul walks the beaches of his home world Kaladin on their final days before leaving for Arrakis, and he trains with Gurney Halleck, the weapons master of House Atreides, and you can see shield generators on their hands projecting these pulsating shields over their bodies. These shields have resonating frequencies that protect you from blaster fire or swift blows, but slowly moving weapons can still penetrate it because you need things like oxygen to be able to get in and out, and if you shoot them at the right place it detonates a nuclear explosion. So they're kind of handy, just also kind of dangerous, and also explains why they're using 
melee weapons here. But also, unfortunately, when they go to Arrakis, those frequencies attract the sandworms like a magnet. It's interesting how each of the blows are casting blue or red. Red maybe being for killing blows or blows to vital organs, blows that break through the shield. We also see a historical carving showing how Atreides taming a bull with runic letters on the frame. This movie is using Game of Thrones language creator David Peterson to develop original languages for this film. I'm assuming Arabic will inspire a lot of what we hear on Arrakis. Moving on. My father rules an entire planet. He's losing it. He's getting a richer one. He'll lose that one too. Okay, we get more of this transition from Caladan to Arrakis. I love this blinding light cast on the arriving family here. Reminds me of Ryan Johnson's photography in The Last Jedi or Villeneuve's own photography in Arrival. And more of this transition in the next clip. <laughs> Arrakis is a death trap. <sighs> Kill them. This is an extermination. Okay, so their Arrakis arrival is met with the sand crawlers, similar to the Jawa sand crawlers in Star Wars, but really it's the other way around. George Lucas and Ralph McQuarrie's designs were inspired by Herbert's descriptions in Dune. And we meet House Atreides' sword master Duncan Idaho, as well as Fremen tribe leader Stilgar, who wears a nose tube that connects to his still suit. Still suits are designed to preserve the body's moisture using various moisture secretions and pumping it back into drinkable water. Wear one of these, you can stay alive in the desert for weeks. Gotta drink your own piss. And we meet the dark forces of House Harkonnen, including Baron Harkonnen himself and his nephew, Glossu Rabin. Actually, behind the burning palm trees during the conquest of Atreides, you can see those soldiers lining up and marching Atreides POWs. Yeah, ooh. There's also a quick shot of Dr. Wellington Yue, a physician for House Atreides on Arrakis with Souk Imperial conditioning, meaning he literally can do no harm, but he does end up playing a crucial role in the Harkonnen Atreides conflict. Also, serving these noble houses are Mintats, essentially human computers, since all computer technology, robots, AI, thinking machines were destroyed and prohibited in the Butlerian Jihad thousands of years earlier, which is why all the technology we see in this movie is super mechanical, medieval, old school. But before we continue, thanks to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. Mm. Every can of Bang is 16 ounces. It contains 300 milligrams of caffeine. It's sugar-free and has zero calories, yet it tastes great. There's over 20 different flavors to choose from. One of those flavors is black cherry vanilla. <laughs> yeah, boy. It's my favorite flavor. If you love cherry, if you love vanilla, and you, you have a darkness inside your soul, this is the drink for you. Because it will totally energize that emo side of you. Check out Bang on Instagram. You can get 25% off your order when you go to bangenergy.com and use the code NEWROCKSTARS25. There you can buy cans of Bang Energy, including their sweet tea and keto coffee flavors. You can also get clothing, fitness supplements, all kinds of stuff to be your best Bang self. Thanks again to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. Get 25% off at bangenergy.com using the code NEWROCKSTARS25. Bang. Moving on. They're picking my family off one by one. Let's fight like demons. Okay, so floating down are these white uniformed soldiers. These could be Harkonnen's troops or the Sardaukar, the ruthless elite military force of the Emperor whom he provides to assist Harkonnen. And we get more awesome battle shots with Duncan. Notice how he slowly runs that blade along the neck, breaking through the shield. Because again, slow gestures are able to penetrate those shields. It actually has inspired an entire new fighting style that people in this world use. Moving on. An animal caught in a trap will gnaw off its own leg to escape. What will you do? I know you. Okay, here Paul finally meets his love interest, Chani, recognizing her from his dreams. Now here, her eyes glow blue from the melange, but only subtly. More grounded reality than what we see in his visions. And yes, no one is bothered by the fact that they are all swimming in their own piss in those still suits. Come on to the next clip. One day, the legend will be born. Now, over all this great battle imagery, the music we hear is Pink Floyd's Eclipse. It's the final track of The Dark Side of the Moon. And the lyrics paint this picture of the totality of one's life experience. All that you touch and all that you see is all part of a cosmic ballet. Or as the song ends with, and everything under the sun is in tune, but the sun is eclipsed by the moon. Meaning that zen balance that we're all seeking is within reach. It's just 
currently blocked by this darkness that eclipses all of our souls at this moment. It's a real psychedelic idea, really, if you think about it, reflecting the spice trip that this movie will be. Also, sampling Pink Floyd here could be a reference to the Alejandro Jodorowsky's epic failed attempt to adapt Dune in the mid-70s when he tried to get Pink Floyd to do the score for that, but then the whole thing fell apart. This is all explored in the fascinating documentary Jodorowsky's Dune. The project was considered the greatest film never made. And we see someone who looks like Baron Harkonnen taken a melange bath. You can see the grains of that spice on his skin. Such an insane shot to me, evoking Apocalypse Now. Not just Martin Sheen rising out of the muck, but also Brando's character, the bald, mad tyrant in a desperate attempt to clean the power. Moving on. <laughs> All of civilization depends on it. The future, I can see it. Here's our first brief look at the massive sandworms of Arrakis. They consume this ship as Paul and Gurney look down on it. I'm assuming people they care about are on that ship. This one appears to be way more massive than the one we see later. These things do vary in size. But let's move on to the next clip. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. All right, Paul's voiceover says the quote that we love from Herbert's Dune, I must not fear, fear is the mind killer, which isn't quoted fully here, but it goes on to say, fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. And here Paul finishes the quote, where the fear is gone, only I will remain. Such a great quote that reflects the terrified but temporary despair of being on Pink Floyd's dark side of the moon. And in these shots, Paul seems to be stepping up as the leader. I just hope that the whole Chosen One myth is kind of sidestepped, since I think Frank Herbert intended Paul to be kind of an aberration to that Benny Gesserit prophecy, like he was a male, not the female they intended, unlike the David Lynch version that I would say turned Paul into a complete god figure by the end of that movie. Like, yes, Dune, like the Star Wars mythology it inspired, is also based on Joseph Campbell and monomyth and Arthurian legend, but the whole chosen one narrative is just way more complex in Frank Herbert's novels. And I'm hoping that this movie reflects that complexity. But let's move on to the final shot. All right, here's the trailer's glory shot, the gaping mouth of the sandworm, which if you listen real closely, you can hear an inhalation sucking sound that actually translates to... Now, in past depictions of the story, like David Lynch's version, the sandworms had hundreds of smaller teeth that the Fremen would whittle into weapons. Here, the teeth are larger bristles modeled on the baleen of whales. Remember those in Finding Nemo? Not only does this design detail give us an earthbound reference point for a massive creature, it also fits with these sandworms being more like filter feeders, just sucking in whatever they pass through rather than, you know, needing sharper predatory teeth. And yes, this particular sandworm does seem a bit smaller than other ones we've seen. Maybe a baby. But also there's like something cute about it. Maybe not the evil Lovecraftian monster we shall run from. Like in that trailer reaction video, I pointed out how this design also gives the sandworm mouth an eye shape. It humanizes it in a way, taking the form of a giant eye that peers into our souls, giving us something to connect to emotionally, but yes, something also to fear because giant eyes are also pretty scary. I am just very, very excited about being able to explore and discuss Dune more with you all. So do us a favor and subscribe to New Rock Stars if you ain't already, hit that notification bell and join us on our official Discord server by supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash New Rock Stars. Follow me on Instagram at EA Boss. Follow New Rock Stars. Thanks for watching, booty holes.